Good morning and welcome to you all to the service of morning prayer on Wednesday the 20th of January as we continue both through this epiphany season and also this week of prayer for Christian unity when we pray for our work with our brothers and sisters in other denominations. Today we have a commemoration of one of perhaps our lesser well-known um, people, Richard Roll of Hampole. Richard Roll was born in about the year 1300 in Thornton in Yorkshire where he first began to live the, the hermit life at the age of 18, after breaking off his education at the University of Oxford. After moving his hermitage to several other sites, he finally settled close to the Cistercian nuns at Hampole, where he undertook much of his prolific writing on mysticism and asceticism. He wrote in Latin, but also produced many texts directly in English, and even in the Northumbrian dialect. His writings were widely influential, and he was venerated for at least 300 years after his death on this day in the year 1349. So today we remember Richard Roll, his writings, his work, his inspiration and his um, talent that I don't have for being a hermit. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory for ever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. Jubilate. O be joyful in the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so in the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. The appointed psalm for this morning is Psalm 81. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Sing merrily to God our strength. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. Take up the song and sound the timbrel, the tuneful lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, as the full moon, upon our solemn feast day. For this is the statute for Israel, the law, a law of the God of Jacob. The charge he laid upon the people of Joseph, when they came out of the land of Egypt. I heard a voice I did not know that said, I eased their shoulder from the burden, their hands were set free from bearing the load. You called upon me in trouble, and I delivered you. I answered you from the secret place of thunder, and proved you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, if you would but listen to me. There shall be no strange God among you. You shall not worship a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I shall fill it. But my people would not hear my voice, and Israel would not obey me. So I sent them away in the stubbornness of their hearts, and let them walk after their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. Then I should soon put down their enemies, and turn my hand against their adversaries. Those who hate the Lord would be humbled before him and their punishment would last for ever. But Israel would I feed with the finest wheat, and with honey from the rock would I satisfy them. 
Oh come, let us sing to the Lord. Father of mercy, keep us joyful in your salvation and faithful to your covenant. And as we journey to your kingdom, ever feed us with the bread of life, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So we continue to hear from the book of Amos, today reading chapter 8. This is what the Lord God showed me, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? Then I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The songs of the temple shall be wailings on that day, says the Lord God. The dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place. Be silent. Hear this, you that trample on the needy, and bring ruin to put the and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, When will the new moon be over, so that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath, so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephra small and the shekel great, and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, Surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account, and everyone mourn who lives in it, and all of it rise like the Nile, and be tossed about and sink again, like the Nile of Egypt? On that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon, and darken the earth in broad daylight, I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on all loins, and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only son, and the end of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming, says the Lord, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east, they shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. In that day the beautiful young women and the young men shall faint for thirst. Those who swear by Ashima of Samaria and say, As your God lives, O Dan, and as the way of Beersheba lives, they shall fall and never rise again. Here ends our first reading. Song of the New Jerusalem Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. Arise, shine out, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Though night still covers the earth, and darkness the peoples, above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. The nations will come to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will lie open continually, shut neither by day nor by night. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land, or ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your walls salvation, and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you delight, nor the moonlight shine upon you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, your God will be your splendour. For you shall be called the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. Our second reading is a continuation of St Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 7, verses 1 to 24. Now concerning the matters about which you wrote, it is well for a man not to touch a woman, for because of cases of sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife, and each woman her own husband. The husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights, and likewise the wife to her husband. For the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise the husband does not have authority after his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another, 
except perhaps by agreement for a set time, to devote yourselves to prayer and then come together again, so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. This I say by way of concession, not of command. I wish that all were as I myself am. But each has a particular gift from God, one having one kind and another a different kind. To the unmarried and the widows I say that it is well for them to remain unmarried as I am. But if they are not practising self-control, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to be aflame with passion. To the married I give this command, not I but the Lord, that the wife should not separate from her husband, but if she does separate, let her remain unmarried, or else be reconciled to her husband, and that the husband should not divorce his wife. To the rest I say, I am not the Lord, that if any believer has a wife who is an unbeliever, and she consents to live with him, he should not divorce her. If any woman has a husband who is an unbeliever, and he consents to live with her, she should not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is made holy through his wife, and the unbelieving wife is made holy through her husband. Otherwise your children would be unclean, but as it is they are holy. But if the unbelieving partner separates, let it be so. In such a case the brother or sister is not bound. It is to peace that God has called you. Wife, for you, for all you know, you might save your husband. Husband, for all you know, you might save your wife. However that may be, let each of you lead the life that the Lord has assigned, to which God called you. This is my rule in all the churches. Was anyone at the time of his call already circumcised? Let him not seek to remove the marks of circumcision. Was anyone at the time of his call uncircumcised? Let him not seek circumcision. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing. But obeying the commandments of God is everything. Let each of you remain in the condition to which you were called. Where you were slave when called, do not be concerned about it. Even if you gain your freedom, make use of your present condition now more than ever. For whoever was called in the Lord as a slave is a free person belonging to the Lord, just as whoever was free when called is a slave of Christ. You were bought with a price. Do not become slaves of human masters. In whatever condition you were called, brothers and sisters, there remain with God. Here ends our second reading. The Benedictus. This is the Christ, the chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation and the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. This is the Christ, the Chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations. So let us pray. So we thank you, Lord, for bringing us to the beginning of this new day. And we pray for all that this new day will bring us. As we have remembered Richard Roll of Hampole this morning, so we give thanks for all those who withdraw from the world to live as hermits, to dedicate their lives to prayer, to worship, to praying and upholding each one of us. We pray for those who are recognised for their spiritual writings, for the work they do in leading people in each generation 
closer to you, Lord. So we pray for our world today. So we pray continually for your gift of peace. We pray for an end to warfare and conflict where it is found, for a breaking down of barriers between people and a building up of each other. We pray for that gift of reconciliation where it is needed. And we pray especially today for the people of America as they prepare to inaugurate a new president, ushering in a new era in that land. We pray that all would pass off peacefully. We pray for the leaders of all nations, with the responsibilities that weigh heavy on their hearts and minds and lives at this time, as they bear responsibility for all the people that they represent, especially in the face of this global pandemic. We pray that as they make decisions, as they meet together, as they work together, they would have your wisdom and discernment, Lord, and that they would receive good and sound advice. We pray that as they make these decisions, and as we are told about them across the world, that there is a clarity, a working together, things that ease our anxious minds. From our prayer intention today, we pray for those without a permanent home, those living on the streets, especially as we look out on the weather today. We pray for those who sofa surf or who rely on hostels for a bed each night, that they would find places where they could receive the support they need. We pray for charities who work with the homeless, for shelter and crisis amongst others. We pray for those groups who work more locally, for the community spirit, for the food shed, for all places that try to provide help for those who are homeless. We pray for our schools, for our young people, for those attending school and those learning from home. We pray for those of our secondary schools who've returned at this time. We pray for Dhaka, for St Wilfred's and for Canon Slade, where many of our young people attend. We pray for our primary schools in our parish, for St Peter's, Holy Trinity and Sudal and for our nurseries as they remain open, caring for little ones. We pray for those parents who have to juggle work and homeschooling, and for teachers as they continue to teach across different platforms. We pray for those who are our key workers, for those jobs which are essential, but have over the years been overlooked. We pray for those who go out to work and those who will be working from home today. We pray for those who feel the frustration at not being able to work, for those who have furloughed, those whose businesses are closed, and those who have lost their employment. We continue to pray most especially at this time, Lord, for our health service, for health service which seems overwhelmed, dealing with so much each and every day. We pray for those on the front line, for those working in intensive care units, for those working on wards, for those who work behind the scenes, for our chaplains providing pastoral care and support. So we pray for our hospitals, for those who work in them, and those who find themselves in hospital at this time. We pray for our hospices, for care homes and sheltered accommodation, for those who work out in the community, for carers, health visitors and district nurses. We pray for our GP surgeries, pharmacies and health centres. And we pray most especially for all those places where vaccinations are being given out today locally and in the hubs. We pray for those who will be giving the vaccinations and for those who will receive them. And so we bring to you, Lord, those who are in need of your healing touch, for those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, 
and for those who care for them. We pray for Lisa, David, Morris, Mary, Margaret, Jeff, Alan, Chris, John, Jim, Elaine, Susan, Kath and her family, Sister Catherine, Christine, Margaret, baby Thomas and his family, Gary, Marion, Douglas, Brian, Steve, Joanna, Ian and Helen, Martin, Dave, Michelle, Helen, Jean and Jackie. Lord, we pray for them and all those we name in our hearts and minds today who long for that healing and wholeness. And so we pray for those who have died. Lord, we pray that as we keep these restrictions at this time, it would translate into less admissions into hospital and to less deaths. But help us always to remember that the numbers that we see are people with family and friends who mourn their loss. We pray for those who have died recently, remembering especially today Joyce Hindle, whose funeral will take place at church a little later on today. And we pray also for those whose anniversaries occur at this time, and for all those who mourn. Lord, surround them with your love this day. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives, Make known your heavenly glory, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Believing the promises of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for the service of morning prayer today. Hope that you have a good day and you don't get too wet if you've got to go out anywhere at all. We have a service of evening prayer at five o'clock later on today if you're able to join me for that. In the meantime, do stay safe, take care and look after yourselves and you remain as always in my prayers.